What's up guys, we're back with our new and improved Catapult. Fully 3D printed, snaps together, doesn't need glue or hardware. It's up for free, check the bio for links. In this video, we're gonna go through the design of the Catapult, how to set it up on your print bed, and then how to assemble it. Let's look at how this Catapult works. We've got an arm with a bucket on the end. You can put your snowball or your marshmallow in there and throw it far away. There's a bearing in here, a print in place roller bearing, and there's gear teeth around the outside of this large diameter, for most of it. These teeth interface with the teeth on the small gear. The small gear is connected by the pin to these springs. So when we rotate the gear, we rotate the inside of the spring, and the spring pulls against this pin that's stuck in the side, and that's how we're storing energy for this. We start from here, trigger is here, and this roller is rolling around the outside. That's what's holding it up, and gravity's trying to rotate the trigger down. We're gonna crank this back, and as we do, we turn this small gear, and these springs are gonna constrict and store energy. When we get to here, and we give the roller a place to go, gravity's just gonna rotate this thing into place, and it's gonna stop on the inside. Now when you let go of this, the springs are gonna try to fling it forward, but the roller's gonna stop it on this flat. So this will stay cocked, and it'll just sit there doing nothing until you press on this button. And when you do, the roller is going to allow you to roll across the surface so we don't have a, a hard button press like we did on our last catapult. This one feels really nice and smooth. Push this down. As soon as you get out of the way, all the energy in these springs is going to be transferred to here and rotate this thing forward and chuck your projectile. The bucket prints separately because it's much wider than the arm and it goes on with a just slotted interface. It's an interference fit, a light one, but you, you press it into place and it stays there. So you just center it on the arm and, and then you're good. This thing will print on its side with no support. We've got the bearing in here, the prints in place. We have one in each side. So there's rollers that go all the way across this. Look inside. Rollers that completely surround uh, an inner race that, that spins really freely. And this was an attempt to get rid of all the friction in the system. So we repeated very nicely. There's a hexagonal pin and this. This gear has a hexagonal socket so that when we turn this, we turn the shaft, the shaft goes into a socket here and that's what turns the spring. So that's how they're all connected. And this pin sticks all the way through from the underside of this surface all the way through to the underside of this surface. And that way when we spin this, they're geared together and, and the springs always are coupled to this arm. The Pivot pin for the arm is also hexagonal. It wasn't really necessary, but I wanted to make sure it spun here and not on the inside or in the hole. It's got a friction fit so that the thing doesn't fall apart. It's an interference. You can see these lobes that come down and push into the sides. We also have a post that sticks out here with an interference fit. This one's two and a half degrees on the side, so it sticks hard. And this thing does not fall apart when you're shooting it. We've shot it over 50 times in a row and, and never even had to tighten it. it just it's up to the task, it stays where it's put. These pins are set at a correct length so that between this pin, that pin, and this post that sticks together, that sets these sides at a correct distance apart and keeps them parallel and holds them together. Then we've got the trigger rotating on this pin. We've got part of the pin coming from each side on the trigger because this side is removable. So we had to print this separately. There's a hole for the pin that goes all the way through it. There's a, an interference post in here that holds the two sides together. So you just push it together, kind of like the Lego. And that's why we can have a spinning roller in here. We couldn't print this in place. Uh, so we came up with a way to separate it, make the pin come in from both sides. So we get an axis of rotation and hold it together and still allow this to spin. The trigger itself has this long arm that functions only as mass on this side of the pin, which makes it want to rotate in a clockwise direction. So if nothing's holding it back, it's going to rotate. This will go down. We'll go this way. Bring the button up. And that's why when we get back and we, we get the notch lined up with the roller, it will fall into place. There's no spring. It's just gravity pulling it down. So I think those are the major design considerations. And that's how this thing works. We've got these stuck in the side. They're an interference fit. And all of this was so that we could design these parts to have very low friction and print without support. Here's how your parts should look on your print bed. Start with the sides. We're going to face this post and the socket on the other side up, these sockets up as well. The bearings will print in place and all of these rollers will be movable as soon as you take it off the build tray. Same with the arm. 
So the arm just prints on the side. It doesn't matter which side. So this part is reversible. These guys need to look like this. The springs, you want to face the socket up. And all of this is just so that we don't have to have any support. The trigger is in disorientation for both parts of the trigger. We want to face the socket and the post up. This is the socket that's going to plug right into there. And the axle that exists on both sides of the part. The gear we just want on the side, either side. Same with the spacers, either side, but we want them axis facing up. And then the hexagonal pins just put a flap down on the bed and they'll print sideways. And that avoids, they're stronger this way because this is the direction that the filament goes as opposed to printing rings, which is its weakest connection point layer to layer. But also you don't have to print a very tall, skinny thing that might tip over and have a print issue. You're not going to have any problems with these pins. So make your parts look like this, you know, decide on colors, do them in batches. You may have to set up more than once depending on the size of your print bed, but we made sure that we'll fit on the beds that are smaller than ours. If you've got 180 square, all of these parts will fit, just not at once. We printed in PLA. We used 30% infill and three wall rooms. Layer height was 0.12 millimeters. I think that's all the vital stats. You won't need support or brims or anything like that. Turn all of that off and that should work for you. It's assembly time. So here are the parts we should have printed. We're going to start looking at these cool bearings. Um, these should all print and move right off of the build plate. And there's three that are, I think, all identical, but printed right into the sides and the boom. We've got to attach this bucket to here. They go together like this. And we want the notch to face down and the bucket to face up so we're going to line this up and push it sideways and that should be pretty snug and then get it centered on there and then put this aside now we're going to do trigger so we've got three parts to the trigger this roller goes over this pin and that's the axle from one side and then this is the other half of the trigger this is the the rest of the axle and this post is going to go in this socket to hold them together and the holes line up for the pivot pin. So we're just going to line this up like this and push it down till we're nice and flush here. And then you'll have a roller that rolls and we can put this over here. Now we're going to grab this one with the post and we're going to find the trigger pivot pin, which is the long skinny one. So we've got these two short ones are going to go with the springs. The long one goes through the middle, through the gear and these spacers. And this one is the boom, the short, larger pin. So the long skinny one goes in this hole for the trigger. And then we're gonna put the trigger on facing this way. So this, right, this is the button side. It goes to the thin leg and the big counterweight side goes to the front. So we drop that on. Then we're going to take the boom and we're going to put the short, larger diameter pin, for lack of a better word, um, even though it's a hexagon. So there's two holes in here. That's the knockout hole for the spring pin. And this bigger socket is the one that the boom pin's gonna go into. So this immobilizes the pin, so the pin can't spin, but the bearing will spin on the pin. We need a spacer and the long pin. So we're gonna go through the spacer and then down into this bearing. Then the gear goes on and that'll drop right in if it, if it hits, like it could get stuck up here, as soon as you turn anything, it's gonna drop in place. Then we're gonna put the last spacer on. Now the other side. So we've gotta get this pin into this hole. We've gotta get this pin through the bearing hole. And then we're gonna line up the trigger pin with this hole and this socket all at the same time. So the first place that I need to get it over is the gear pin. And then get them all lined up. Now there's a, a gap here and be careful when you move this this pin will fall out 
because the springs actually retain it. But there's still a gap and you're going to push this down till it's home and all of the pins bottom out in their counter bore so you can push it together without pinching anything. Now these little pins are the spring anchors. We can push those in now. So just put them in the hole on either side and push them all the way down. It should be a snug fit. They're hard to get out. There's a knockout hole on the other side though. So now we want to find this spring. So they're backwards from one another and we want them to sit in this orientation and this one's going to turn around to go on the other side. So we want to orient this so that the boom is roughly vertical when the spring is relaxed. And we want to do the same thing on the other side. It's easier now because the boom will stay where we put it. So you can actually start on the spring pin and then rotate this guy into place and then just push on the ends of the springs to get them seated all the way down and then this will stay together. It doesn't fall apart anymore. Um, and now we're ready to crank this guy back. We're going to see the trigger just fall into place when we get down far enough. And when we push on this, that's going to come up fast. And that's what curls your projectiles. So now you're ready to go. Go chuck some marshmallows.